Hey, good morning, church. Would you stand with us? Let's just fix our eyes on Jesus today. Father, we love you so much. Jesus, we love you so much. We come to worship. We come to praise. Holy Spirit, would you come today and fill this house with your presence, fill our hearts and fill our mouths with your praise, with the worship of King Jesus. Would you stir up hope in us today? Would you stir up faith in us today? Would you stir up a song in us today? A song of praise? Lord, we come to worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We come to give you honor and glory that's due your name. Would you be glorified? Would this not just be another service, Lord, but would you come and encounter us today? Jesus' name. Let's worship him. I'll praise on the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure. When I'm doubting, I'll praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. My soul, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I praise when I feel it, I praise when I don't, I praise because I know. Still in control Cause my praise is a weapon It's more than a sound That's true My praise is the shout That brings Jericho down As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord my soul Praise the Lord Oh my soul I won't Oh I won't be quiet My God is alive How could I keep it inside I'm gonna praise the Lord Oh my soul Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than I will praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true. Praise cause you see that again. I praise, I praise. Oh, I praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. your voice. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't. 
keep it inside I won't, oh I won't be quiet My God is alive How could I keep it inside I won't, oh I won't be quiet My God is alive How could I keep it inside I'm gonna pray to the Lord Oh my soul beautiful about just commanding your soul to praise even when your heart doesn't feel it and the circumstances around you don't seem praiseworthy but he is worthy always and we command our soul to worship just like David the psalmist he said bless the Lord oh my soul let all that is within me bless his name so let's just lift it up one more time give it all you got we're gonna pray So we're gonna praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'm gonna praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't, oh I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it in? I won't, oh I won't be quiet. My God is alive. Keep it inside. Oh, I won't be quiet. My God is alive. How could I keep it? Give it a shot. We're gonna praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Give him praise. Jesus. Bowser. <laughs> Tough to follow that one. <laughs> uh, good morning, church family. Oh boy. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> Did you guys know we had a garage sale this past week? <laughs> we still have some great items down there for you to take. <laughs> Somebody must need this to joy a cookie, huh? <laughs> Anyhow, after church, if you'll come down, we have, look at a nice coat, scarves, stuffed animals. Hey, Ooh. that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. oh, I, I don't want it. Kathy, look at a sleeping bag, coolers. Anyhow, if you'd come down after church and take what you want, and if you feel blessed by it, you can leave us a donation. But lots of nice clothes down, down there yet. We also want to say thank you to all of you that did give for our garage sale. Your items became a blessing to many a people. So it was great. Thank you. Also, thank you to the, all the people that worked hard to make it a success. We also, during this time, were able to share Jesus. We prayed and had prayers answered, and we invited people to our church. So it's a multi-purpose sale that, that, that we do. So not only do we sell items, but we, we sell Jesus as well. So thanks, everybody. We'll, we'll see you downstairs after church. And, and if somebody wants me to hold any of these things, let me know. <laughs> I'd help you with that, but I'm... <laughs> it happens to be our wedding anniversary today, 51 years. So that little antic doesn't surprise me at all. I've seen that many times. All right, to the script. Time to register for Sunday school and Wednesday night in less than a month. Uh, Sunday school and Wednesday night program begins. 
Uh, register your kids for Sunday school, Kids Blast, Crew 56 Crew. You can scan uh, the QR code in the newsletter or go to the foyer or go to the uh, website to register. Uh, the adult Wednesday night study will be going through the Alpha series this fall, and I believe we have a little, uh, little trailer on the Alpha series. Every day, we are inundated with so much information. Yet so many questions remain. How can I find my purpose? Why am I here? What should I believe? How can I find peace? Why is life so unfair? How can I thrive in challenging times? How can I make the most of my life? These are life's big questions, but there's rarely enough time to think them through properly. If you live to be 70, you're going to spend 20 years and 3 months asleep, 10 years and 5 months watching TV, 5 years and 9 months in some form of transportation, 7 years and 6 months eating and drinking. Why not spend less than 24 of them asking life's biggest questions and try out uh, The Alpha series begins September 11th, so come to supper at 5.30 that night. You can sign up at Sign Up Central if you want to attend the class. Uh, we are in need of volunteers. We need more people for the prayer team, for nursery, sound booth, for help, Wednesday night program. So consider doing that. More announcements uh, in your bulletin, and you can place your prayer requests in the box below the sound booth. Sign your attendance pads and stand up and greet your neighbors.
with your presence, God. Thank you for coming and meeting us here. We believe that you truly are in this room with us, King Jesus. Just be enthroned on our praises as we lift you high, Lord. You are holy. You are the God who is holy and righteous and magnificent, who was and is and is to come, and we worship you, God. We're hungry for more of you, God. We need more of you. We need you, Lord. Sing this together. Let's hail the King. Let's give him the glory and the worship that he is so worthy of. All hail King Jesus. All hail the Lord of heaven and earth. All hail King Jesus.
we hail you, King Jesus. We honor you. We honor you, Lord, in this place. We thank you, God, for what you've done. We thank you for redeeming us, God, for giving us a new life, for giving us purpose forgiving us holy spirit living inside of us to empower us to live a life that is worthy of the calling of which we've been called god would you just move fresh wind in this place lord as we open up your word thank you for your word god let us not take it for granted this morning god just teach us a new thing you know your word is living and active and god thank you for that lord just in a fresh way meet us here just bless this place lord as we bless you we love you we love you we love you and pray this in the mighty powerful wonderful beautiful name of jesus amen and church you can have a seat You can uh, follow along in your Bibles. We're going to be in Psalm 51 and Philippians 2. And if that's um, too much of a distraction for you, maybe you can just close your eyes and take in the power of God's Word. This is Psalm 51, um, 7 through 12. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. O oh God, Give me back my joy again. <laughs> you have broken me, now let me rejoice. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the state of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and make me willing to obey you. From Philippians 2, 12 through 18. Dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. God is working in you giving you a desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless but I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And all I want, and I want all of you to share that joy. Yes, you should rejoice, and I will share your joy. Okay, thank you, Drew. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, just so thankful, and God is so good. Praise the Lord. And um, as we come to prayer today, um, so many different things, but just um, thank the Lord. Heather Stream made it through her surgery, so we continue to pray for healing for Heather. And um, let's see here. Marvin Prestrude is still, uh, uh, Mary's here somewhere, but um, how, how's he doing? Okay, so we'll keep praying for Marvin. Got some more cellulitis, so we're going to pray for that. And um, Cindy Hoff also had a surgery procedure done. I don't know where Cindy's at, but... 
Oh, you, should, you, you didn't have to have surgery. That was the answer to prayer. And okay, so we're gonna we're gonna pray for Cindy that um, that no surgery and that it gets better and better. So praise God for that. It's amazing to see you here today. So praise the Lord. And um, Jody Fields is having some issue with her heart, and um, they're thinking some kind of surgery or something, or, yeah, but we're going to pray, um, maybe we should just, well, we're going to lift these things up in prayer right now, and, um, and there is prayer afterwards, too, if anybody wants some prayer, but... Um, or more prayer. I had I was sensing something about somebody's having a problem with their wrist. So I don't know. Is, is that true? Is there is someone here struggling with that, or am I just off? Maybe somebody online. I don't know. But we're gonna pray for whoever that is. So anyway, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. And Father God, we say thank you, Jesus, for. Um, you know, we've got so much to praise you for today, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. Thank you that we can be here to worship you and, and just to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's so good to be in your presence and as believers to come in Jesus' name. And we do pray for, you know, if there's someone with uh, some kind of wrist problem, bless them in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Marvin that you will heal him and we do pray complete deliverance for him. And for for Cindy, God, we're praying that she will not ever have to have a surgery, that even now, um, God, that you will continue to heal her back and thank you that she's, you know, hasn't had surgery, but God, heal her. Bless Heather, and Lord, thank you for bringing her through. Heal her, and we pray right now for Jody in the name of Jesus Christ, God. We are praying as a church family, that you would touch her heart and completely heal her. And Lord, there's probably a million other things here that we're supposed to pray for, but thank you, God. We just lift these up to you. We pray for our nation. We need revival. God, if there's ever been a nation that needed revival, we need it. And God, help our leaders. Help, um, Father, we're praying. Thank you for, um, for our wonderful um, yard sale or garage sale that we had, rummage sale, and for the, just the blessing that that was. Thank you, Father, and um, thank you for, for a good year of Lake Beauty Bible Camp and that, that our young people are um, coming back from that too and continue to bless all the ministry that happened through that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, um, yeah, and, okay, so we're going to go to, you know, with that yard sale, you know, I, it's, it's, you don't want to start mentioning names, because, but, you know, you got to say that Lynn was here a, a lot, okay, and she did a lot of stuff, so Lynn, wherever you're at, God bless you, and, and And, and Bonnie, and okay, I'm going to stop naming names, okay? Just forgive me if I did not, you know, your blessings in heaven, okay? God bless you. So anyway, um, so years ago, or not years ago, right now, uh, my son, I'm reading the wrong little script here, it's like, but <laughs> off on the wrong story, but um, my son John, he, he buys these little um, disposable cameras, you know, these little plastic things that, and they're actually, you know, they're film cameras, so they're old technology, right? But, and I don't know why he does it, because we all have one of these, and they're way better, right? <laughs> and, but anyway, he gets a kick out of that, and so you have to um, bring it to Walmart afterwards and get it processed. If you're Canadian, you'd get it processed. <laughs> but um, anyway, so but the thing with that is that you don't really know what you have until the 
until the pictures come back, you know. So it's kind of a faith thing. Maybe that's what he likes about it. I don't know. But um, I was just thinking about that because I was thinking, you know, with, with the life of faith in Jesus, you know, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within us. And that, and, you know, the Lord is moving in our lives and in our heart. And sometimes we're not, you know, we don't see the results of our faith right away, there, but something's going on. So I don't know if this is the best illustration, but I just thought of all the processes, you know, like those little cameras, you have to, there's a chemical reaction, you know, then they have to print it on paper. So there's all these things that that, that camera goes through to develop a picture. And I think with faith, there's a whole lot that we go through in our lives and as, as faith is growing in us and developing and the Lord is moving in our lives. And that is such a precious thing to have that relationship with God the Father that God is moving in us. We don't always see it, right? And we don't always feel it, but God is moving. And for the Apostle Paul, you know, one of his, uh, he, he was called to the nations, you know, to go and share the gospel which he did, and, and we know that um, you know, one of the places he shared the good news was in a town called Philippi, and it, as we read in the book of Acts, it, it cost Paul and Silas a whole lot to bring the gospel to that place because they were persecuted, they were beaten, they were put in a jail, you know, all this crazy stuff happened, but but, you know, they, they planted a church there. And um, so this church was growing, and the, the faith of Christ was growing in these people. And so Paul writes in uh, Philippians 2, verse 12, he says to them, he says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it's even more important so he wanted them to keep following Jesus, you know, keep going with your faith. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. So now is he saying that we're saved by works? No, we're not saved. That's not what he's saying. We're saved by grace and, and grace alone, you know. We're not saved by the things that we do. We don't earn salvation. But we do work out our faith, right? We're working out the, the outworkings of, of what God is doing within us. Work hard to show the results of your salvation. And so um, there's an old saying that says, if you, were, uh, you know, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? You know, like can people see a difference in you? Another one is... Um, that another old saying is, you might be the only Bible that people ever read, you know, because they're, they're looking at you. And if you claim to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus, there needs to be a difference within us. And there needs to be the evidence of the faith that we have in Christ and the working of the Holy Spirit within us. And um, so... Is God making a difference in our life? Now, we all fall from time to time, right? We all stumble into sin. And we have to just be honest about that. So if people are watching us, you know, they're going to see an imperfect picture of, of Jesus, right? Because we're not perfect. Because we, we, even though the Holy Spirit lives within us, we still have a sin, sin nature, you know, so there's this struggle within us, and so sometimes we stumble into sin. Okay, and and there and different people have different things that they they struggle with. You know, um, maybe some person struggles with gossip, or another person struggles with materialism, or with you know lying or something. You know, but but. Whatever it is that you might stumble into, um, whatever the sin is, 
we need to quickly repent from that and come to the Lord and say, God, forgive me for that. And, um, and as we do that, the Lord will forgive us. God is good. But we do struggle, and, and we have to admit it. And even the Apostle Paul himself struggled. In fact, he would, Paul said that he was the chief of sinners. You know, he, he wasn't, um, he was admitting that, that following Jesus, even for him, wasn't easy, you know. And it's not easy to put the Lord first in our life. It's a daily discipline. That's why we're called disciples, right? It's, it's, it's hard to, um, to follow, but thank God that he gives us his grace. But I'm going to read this that Paul said in Romans 7, 14. He says, So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I'm all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I, I do what I hate. But if I know that what I'm doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. But I don't. I don't want to do what's wrong, but I do it anyway. Does anybody relate to this stuff, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, I think we, we all do, right? We all struggle. Um, but if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I've discovered this principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. It's a pretty discouraging passage here. But, but then it turns here. It says, um, who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God... The answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So we, so we have this, again, this struggle between the sinful nature and the Holy Spirit. And so when we stumble, again, we have a decision to make when, when that happens, okay? So we learn, one of the things we learn in confirmation is that uh, sin is all in thought, word, and deed that's contrary to the will of God. So it's not just deeds that are wrong, that we might do bad things. Um, it's also things we say. It's also even things that we think. And so sin is all in thought, word, and deed that's contrary to the will of God. We are all guilty. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So we have a decision to make when we stumble into sin from time to time. First of all, we have to admit <laughs> that that we are sinners, okay? We have to admit it. Just come clean with the Lord because the truth is that God already knows, okay? It's not like you're going to hide something from him, <laughs> you know? Just be honest with him. Just get it over with, okay? Just get with the Lord. So when you, when you mess up, get with the Lord right away. And so you have a decision. You're either going to get with him and confess it and ask for forgiveness and repent of it and, and move on. Or you're going to continue to, to run away from him and keep stumbling in it. And after a while, you're not just stumbling in it, you're walking in it. And you're headed for hell, okay? So, that's, so you have a decision to make. And, 
And the right decision is to keep going with Jesus, to turn back to him. And the good news here is that he's given us the power to overcome. We can come to the Lord. But so, so, so this is what, you know, so these are kind of um, some things that, I, that you can do. You don't have to do these things. But I'll tell you, when I, sometimes when I mess up with the Lord or with in life, I come to the Lord, I get alone with him, and I just, I say, again, you don't have to do this, but this is just a picture or a tool that you can do, okay? You, you take your hands and you say, Lord, in Jesus' name, God, forgive me. Um, and you confess it. You tell him what it was that you did. He already knows, but you just do it, okay? Just tell him, God, I was, you know, I did this or that or the other thing. Or I should have done this and I didn't do it, you know? Because <laughs> there's also sins of omission, right? But you tell him about it. Just be honest with it. And then, then you say, God, forgive me. Lord Jesus, I receive your forgiveness. And now here's, here's a wonderful verse, 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that beautiful? He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So we just say, Lord, I just give that to you right now. God, forgive me in Jesus' name. And that's a t picture, a tool you can use if you want to, or just say it to him, whatever. Um, so, so get honest with God, confess it. And what is the, the title of our sermon again? Grace, God's grace for sinners. Praise the Lord. When I saw that picture title today, I was like, oh, that's right. That's what I was supposed to preach on. Because I, so God's grace for sinners. Praise the Lord for that, right? God is so good. We get honest with him. He forgives us. We keep going with him. Repent. Get rid of the garbage. And God is so good. Now, um, so let's, let's, Get back to our sermon here. So this is from Philippians chapter, again, chapter 2. Paul goes on. He says, oh, I'll just go back a little bit. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Again, we have to fear God more than we fear people. Okay? There's all kinds of peer pressure. It's not just for teenagers or whatever. Peer pressure is for every. Buddy, right? And so, but we got to be willing to put the Lord first in our life. And even if that's unpopular, um, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, by the way. So verse 13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Okay, so God is giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Uh, I like how the NIV says it, same verse, but it says it differently. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Okay, God puts desires within us and, um, and the, the will, and then he gives us the power to act it out. Okay, so God's going to put things in your heart, things that he wants you to do. And, uh, you know, many years ago when I was up in Alaska, I was a pastor in a village and all this, and Eskimo village, and um, God put a desire in my heart. I, and I said to the Lord one time, I said, Lord, I would love, you know, I think you're calling me full-time into ministry and... Um, Lord, here I am, and I, I would like to someday be married and have kids and, and be a pastor at a church somewhere. That's what I said to God. Now, it took years for that to get worked out, but folks, here I am, you know, and God is good, right? Praise the Lord. Here I am 50 years later. No, not, not that long, but, but you know, it takes time, right? 
And, um, but God is faithful. He'll give you desires in your heart. God, it, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. God has a good purpose for you. And it is so good to do the things that God wants us to do. God gives you gifts. And, you know, sometimes we, we expect that God has something nasty cooked up for us. That, man, if I'm going to follow Jesus, it's going to be really not pleasant. And, well, you know what? There's some things that are hard <laughs> if you follow Jesus. I'm not going to lie about that. But, but you know what? Um, I, I remember, and I might have shared this story before. I just really, I really liked it because um, it spoke to me about how God is so gracious. I, I read, it's, it's, not a, it's not just a story. It's something that happened. There was this guy from Scotland that, um, that had a little farm in the highlands of Scotland, had sheep, and this guy was... He was a devout Christian, and he was also, speaking of photography, he was a gifted photographer. So he'd go out into the, the highlands and take photographs of his sheep and the beautiful mountains and stuff. And, but anyway, this guy felt a calling to serve God full-time in missions. And so he went down to, uh, there was a mission school, training school down in London, and he would go, he, so he joined this school or or. Um, went to the school, and he felt that, you know, he, he was willing to lay down his life for the Lord and go into uh, sharing the good news with, in foreign lands. And so he went to this place, and now on the weekends or holidays, whenever he could, he'd go back to his, his home in Scotland, and when he was up there, he'd take more pictures, and he'd be with his sheep, and and he loved the Scottish people and all this stuff. And then he'd come back to London and he'd show everybody his photographs. And, man, isn't it beautiful? I just love Scotland, you know. And, and just talking about it to everybody. And finally, when the training thing was over, he met with the mission board. And he, he had said that he was willing to go to Africa. And so the mission board met with him and they said, so, so you feel that God's calling you to go to Africa they said just a couple of practical questions. You know, they asked him some things about his calling. And, and they said, by the way, how do you like hot weather? It's pretty, pretty hot down in Africa. And he says, I hate hot weather. Just hate it. But, man, I'm willing to lay down my life, you know, for the Lord. And, and so they're like, okay. And they asked him a few other things. And, and then um, about a day later or so, they called him back. They said, you know we don't think God's calling you to go to Africa. And he was like, what? He says, I, I did the, the course. You know, I worked hard, and I'm willing to go. They said, we think God's calling you to go to Scotland. And he's like, Scotland? I, well, but there's already, like, Christians in Scotland. And they said, well, there's a whole lot of Scottish people that, are, that don't know Jesus too, Right? And he said, you mean God would let me stay in Scotland? And they're like, yeah, he would. And he was like, oh, praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. I don't have to go live in a grass hut somewhere. You know, I can serve God right. And, and, and so he, that man went back to Scotland, and he served the Lord faithfully and, and loved it. You know, loved it. Because that's what God put in his heart. God's not going to call you into something that you hate, right? He's going to, he knows the things that he has planned for you. And Ephesians 2.10 um, says this. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. That, that one is mind-blowing to me, that even long ago, before you were even born, that God has a purpose and a destiny for you and for me, that God has stuff that he wants you to do. He, he's got stuff for you to do that I could never do, okay? He's got a purpose. He's got things for you 
that, that he's put into your heart. God's put dreams into your heart that he wants to see happen. And, and the wonderful thing is that when you hook into that, it's like hooking into a, a salmon, right? It's like, yeah, bring it home, bring it on. You know, it's so good. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Wish I could go fishing with you guys sometimes. But um, I'm telling you, you know, it, it's just, it's what you were made for. God's not, yeah, anyway, so we're his workmanship created for good works in Christ that God prepared in advance for us to do. And um, so all these stories about missions and preaching and so forth, you know what, um, you don't have to be a preacher or missionary to fulfill God's purpose. We believe in the priesthood of all believers here, right? So, so that everything that you do, do it as unto the Lord, right? Maybe God has given you a gift with working with numbers and so forth. I do not understand you at all. But you know what? Maybe that's your passion. And it's like, that's from the Lord, right? Maybe God's made you to be able to fix things. Again, I don't know how you do that, but no. It's good. It's good. Maybe the Lord wants you to be a teacher or a dentist or a pest control. I don't know. You know, like I don't. Whatever it is, you know, like maybe you have a passion for something, and that's good. Just do it to the best of your ability. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And, and say, Lord, here's my life. Take my life. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Amen. So um, we give it to the Lord, and God will do amazing things through your life. And there was something else I was going to say about that, just that, um, yeah, let the, just let God continue to, to move. Um, and you might be at a point where you go, man, I don't know what in the world I'm supposed to be doing. Really. I don't really know. But, you know, um, you just, like my dad used to say, you know, God can't steer a ship that's not moving. So um, maybe... As you launch out, the Lord will begin to direct you. I sure learned a whole lot about what I wasn't supposed to do <laughs> or what I, what I wasn't good at, you know, but it's all good. Praise the Lord, you know, but um, ultimately the Lord is going to guide you and he will direct your path. And along the way, along the way, God is going to use you powerfully as you worship him in spirit and in truth and just daily lay down your life for him. So I guess that's the message here today. I'll, I'll read it again here. It says, um, for, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Or this one, for... For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So let's just pray as the, as the team comes up. Father God, we say thank you that you love us so much to extend your grace to us. We need it all the time, Lord, because we, we make mistakes, Lord. We, we fall short of your glory. There's things that we do that we shouldn't do. There's things we sh say that we shouldn't say. There's things we think we shouldn't think. And God, we need your grace all the time. And God, help us just to go right back to you, Father. Not to stray, but to get right back, to keep short accounts with you, Father. And we thank you that as we do follow you, you're going to lead us, Lord Jesus, into those things. You're going to give us a heart, a dream, Lord, that you want to fulfill through our life. It's not somebody else's dream, but it's, God, it's the dream that you've given to us individually. individually. 
And Father God, we say thank you too that it's not just for individuals, it's for, it's for a whole church. God, what is the dream that you have for our church? God, what is the, the vision that you want to do through this ministry, God, above and beyond what we ask or imagine? Ephesians 3.20. Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, come and, and fill us up, empower us to do those things that you prepared in advance for us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let's just stand and worship again. Just real quick, real quick, before we sing this song, I want to share just like a story. It's just like 30 seconds. But we were singing this song one time and leading worship in this song, just declaring the name of Jesus. Like the name of Jesus is so powerful. Just the name of Jesus. And while we were seeing this together as a church, someone was set free. Like someone was delivered, just the name of Jesus, us standing together and just united declaring the powerful name of Jesus. So I just want us to, as we sing this song, not just sing it, you know, like our worship is a weapon. And I believe that, you know, as we come together and have faith, that the name of Jesus is more powerful than anxiety, depression, generational, you know, family curses, that, that kind of thing. Like I believe people will be set free today, right now. Okay, so let's join together. Okay, the name of Jesus is so powerful. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus in the day. 
darkness over every enemy. And Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing. Okay to praise him. Ah. So good to worship in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Um, again, there is uh, lots of great stuff downstairs that we would love for you to take home. So just take it, fill up those bags, and get it out of here. Amen. And um, other thing is. Uh, that let's see here oh there's prayer available and um, as we close today oh, I, I was going to say one last thing and that is Alpha as we talked about Alpha be in prayer for that because that's coming on September 11th and that's when it starts it is an, uh, an opportunity to share the good news to invite people who maybe aren't with Jesus yet or maybe they need to grow it's good for everybody okay it's good for Christians good for people that aren't Christians yet pray about it we as a church we want to reach our world for Christ right so be in prayer about that and we want to bathe that thing in prayer Okay, so the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. We'll see you.